Okay, many thanks for joining. So we have already a good number of people joining. Um, thank you. This is the first um, uh, open air provide community call. So the um, monthly call where we um, uh, join the, the content provider managers, repository managers and uh, other uh, data sources uh, of, of open air um join here in this community call to provide you some useful information some of the recent novelties and also to receive your feedback usually uh, we try to highlight a specific topic a specific um, uh, issue uh, that we we want to address or to present to you today uh, we will focus on the um, on how open air is managing and curating organizations information uh, this is not um, clearly a provide thing so it's not a feature or functionality from the dashboard from the provide dashboard but we thought that it was important as we did some important developments in our graph last year and we have a service uh, we have also um, a specific um, uh, support service to to support to curate this organization so we we thought that it was important and because we know that the, the content provider managers in open air are uh, usually paying attention to the way that the, the information of their organization is is exposed in, in open air and presented in open air but the first part is uh, about so just to highlight what we did last year what were the, the most relevant developments uh, just for you to um to be aware for some of some of you will be a repetition for others will be a kind of novelty but this is what we we want to do uh, today so uh, present the main um, and the recent uh, developments and things that we will start working and uh, and then uh, part of the, the organizations that I, I will do together with my colleague Gina. Uh, as you know, if you want also to to make some put some feedback uh, or questions in the in the meeting notes, you can do it. But of course, you can use the chat and um, be aware that uh, all this information is available in the in this page, the provide community calls where. In fact, they are already scheduled for this first semester of the year. And Andre already shared the slides that we are going to present. So as the, we have some links, you can you can, you can use it, you can download. Um, OK. Uh, usually, I, 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 I present some, uh, some recent news uh, in the first part of the meeting. Uh, as I'm going to, in fact, highlight the novelties from 2021 so i don't have too much to say here i just want to a reminder for us because sometimes we receive this these questions a reminder for us to for you to uh, know that we have a page in open air where you can see the um, the aggregation uh, content provision workflows and uh, for you to be aware when was the last time that we did an index uh, update of, of our of our um, uh, infrastructure of our graph and uh, of visible in explore.openair.eu okay be aware of that so we we have that information so available um here okay in this page uh the link is, is there it's not in a, a clear visible place so this is why sometimes we need to expose it but you can see here the the dates etc so usually we put this in the in the explore you can see it if you go to explore explore.eu you see it on the bottom of the of the page and you can check for the when is the last uh, update so if you if you search uh, you can go to the link that you already know but it's visible also here in the bottom of the of the discovery service so the, the last update just for you to check when was the the last update you can see this is the explanation of the workflow um, and then the index and the stats update so you can always check this um, page for you to be aware and, and when when we have um, relevant 
changes to the content we we highlight some of these uh, of these changes as the one for example that is here related with um, what we are going to present today that was introduced um, uh, organizations curated via this service open orgs that we have in in summer uh, last year uh, so and we are going now to explain some things that is a result in fact from the integration of this service so you can see this please do not forget because sometimes we receive this kind of questions um and because of also this uh, uh, i was not sure i was discussing with my colleague andre if i should put this information or not but as we received some some requests already uh, there is there is um <clears throat> um a discordance between the information that we have available in the aggregation history of the dashboard and uh, the um, the index update of, of visible in explore so sometimes because of that we receive some some complaints or some requests so um we we, we discussed already last week that we should improve our team should improve the up text uh, here in this um in this uh, page okay this uh, aggregation history here is uh, there is a, um not clear not it's not completely aligned the information that we have here about when was the last index update that in fact this was the last uh, indexed version of your repository uh, in our graph but then between this date and the um <coughs> in the index update in visible in explore there is a disalignment so it's not uh, it's not exactly the same date so we realized that this is not clear for the end users and of course it's not clear because it's not explained it but uh, so we as we received some requests we thought that it was important so um this is like the, the let's say the the um, the, um, the screenshot of your uh, content that uh, we have it in, we have in our graph so what we have in our graph is from the first of uh, the the january 10th uh, and then some days after uh, we in fact put it visible in the in explore sometimes for different reasons there is uh, some delays okay so just to make it clear um if you have any question don't don't hesitate but but we will try to in fact improve the information here on the top of this page to to make this clear and to clearly state to you what is the last date that is visible and when when was the last uh, update date of the um, what you see in explore let's say okay this is what we want to to do okay about uh, this first part about just to highlight some of the um, things that we did in 2021 that are relevant for you to know some of you are no others don't so um, the multi-user access um, functionality uh, was finally uh, made available in the dashboard something really important uh, lots of you have requested so uh, it can be done via the update tab okay be aware of that and this it's working well so if you have uh, other people in your institution in your uh, infrastructure that need to have access to the data source to manage and to access the information of the metadata enrichments of the of the of the history of the aggregation history etc be aware that you can have other um, uh, persons to to other accounts to access the information you just need to ensure that that specific person have already a login uh, in in open air okay this information is visible here in the update tab okay and you can update admins okay it's important to, as you see here for example for, for an example of one repository so be aware of that is the, the in the in the same place where you can update the information you can update the interfaces and you can update the admins of this of this uh, of your data source okay um also from the broker from the the metadata enrichments we did some changes some relevant changes in fact um 
uh, basically visible in the dashboard a new procedure to subscribe uh, so we you now see only um, uh, an example uh, a sample sorry a sample of uh, metadata enrichments uh, until the limit of 100 um, if you want to subscribe um, uh, for a specific uh, metadata enrichment uh, that we have to you of with some specific filters by date or by others uh, to see more than those 100 so you need to subscribe so uh, as you remember so now in the enrichments you can only see um, a maximum of uh, of um, 100 you see the number of events that you have available of course you can you can um, filter uh, do whatever you want here in the filter by date it's something that usually people need and then subscribe uh, these events okay and then you will receive via email and also here in the tab notifications the, um, the this information okay and the notifications are per user okay it's important to to say uh, also from the broker um, there is a, a, a available in our api um, a new a new command line to access the book information of our enrichments if you can in a programmatically way consume this information uh, it's important to say that we have changed the access to the apis okay so it's everything visible now under the graph, graph.openair.eu, and you have an area, specific area for APIs. Uh, so here in the APIs, you will have this information, this one about the broker, it's here, but also about other APIs, it's here available. So be aware of this, okay? It was an important change that we have done um, uh, uh, recently, uh, the access to the APIs, not the this common line was was um, uh, really um, in the first semester that we we have made this available. And there is a, a, a call uh, we have dedicated a call about this, so where our colleague Claudio Azzori have explained the way that you can consume programmatically this information. Um, and it's important also to, for you to be aware that uh, um, uh, colleagues from the, the company for science did an interesting work uh, resulting from um, a tender, a tender uh, that we did in open air uh, advance to enrich local data via the open air graph. Uh, there is also uh, the recordings in the presentation also from last year. I don't remember from when was the the call maybe Andre can can put that in the in the chat uh, where we we had um, uh, Andrea Bolini from for science presenting and detailing what you can do to enrich local that, uh, data via the open air graphs for those that are using this space um, software platform for repositories for publication repositories okay okay um, the other the other um, important uh, developments that we did was to make available this fair assessment uh, validator uh, it's important to remind you about that uh, so it's just an assessment tool okay to share to check um, uh, the compatibility uh, of your uh, repository against the fair data maturity model indicators from 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 rda so, was really a, a really interesting uh, work from uh, from uh, from open air and thanks to our colleagues from university of bielefeld andreas is, is here also andreas have presented this this uh, validator tool which i think is a, a benefit for all of us uh, we will have some uh, some news about that uh, it's also here a colleague uh, but i will i will talk about that in the the, in the next slide uh, so be aware of that, uh, just to, rem to present that this tool is available here in the, um, in the validator, okay, sorry. So in the validator area to validate, you can validate your 
data source against uh, our guidelines, uh, if it is a literature data or pre-system, and there is this fair assessment tool that you can use to, to test, okay? Uh, it's just, it's just a, it's for it, so it, we don't proceed with nothing in terms of registration or, but it's just a, a, a an assessment for, of your, of your repository. The other two highlights, uh, and here, uh, uh, Andreas, if you want to say something, please feel free. So it's just a, a remind to ourselves as we are working on the update of uh, of our guidelines for institutional and thematic repository managers uh, for you to to know that there is in our guidelines um, page a place where that you can contribute uh, and you can be aware of uh, the plans for the 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 updates that we have in terms of version so the uh, for a, a new version of, of, of the guidelines and you can also contribute to this Google document. Andreas presented last year in, in one of the community calls, be aware of that, so feel free to contribute, to comment. Andreas, do you want to say something about this or uh, it's sufficient what I said? This is just a, really a, a reminder. Maybe in upcoming calls we can... Um, we can say something more about that, but feel free to, to add. So thank you. Thank you, Pedro, um, for the presentation of the new guideline version of our release candidate. So we are um, in the phase to finalize these uh, release candidate to and publish this in the next upcoming week. So um, if you have any contributions to these guidelines, please feel free, as Pedro said, to contribute to the document or to the GitHub uh, issue tracker. Thank you very much. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. And to finish, um, we didn't have uh, really, in terms of features, functionalities of the user's account service, uh, new things in 2021. We have it, in fact, in our backend. They, they are not yet visible as we want also to introduce um, a counter release five reports may, uh, available via our dashboard, but they are not uh, ready yet. Something that we are going to, to work in the coming in the coming months, and I think we will make it available for sure. It's a promise now <laughs> in the first semester. Uh, but uh, for some of you that uh, are, are also benefiting from this service, um, we had this, during a long period um, an outdated information about the data that we were collecting from those, the, the, those data sources that are using um, our, our metrics uh, service. So, but uh, the, we, we, we have updated, so the information is corrected, made available in the dashboard. Uh, uh, also, the users um, count information that we are collecting from the data sources is available also in Explore in terms of um, views, downloads in the, um, in the data source and also views in the, in the open air um, Explore service. So be be aware of, of, of that. So if, if you found any issue, just um, just contact us. Uh, so uh, and uh, and um, please um, let me check where is okay disappear. I wanted to let me check. I, I lost the the provide example I was giving. Just be aware that um, if you want to benefit from this um, this service, as I know that there are some new cameras here, uh, <laughs> uh, be aware that you can, um, let me give you an example. You can, in your data source, uh, go to users counts and enable the service so if you are new if you don't if you didn't enable yet the service you will see this page uh, receive instructions about how to proceed then you enable here you click here enable and then you will receive a tracker code and some instructions um, based on some plugins that we have for different uh, um, types of uh, um, 
software platforms, so repository software software platforms. So be aware that so click in the user account tab and, and follow the instructions. So this is okay. Last my last slide, and then we move to organizations. And I hope that this is this is being useful for some of you, as I know that there are some several people here new. Be aware that we uh, there are um, four or five things that we want to highlight for the for this year, but the, uh, I have decided to put this together with my colleague Andre to highlight these three topics. So, and Leonidas, he also if you want to say something about the guidelines for evaluation, we you can we can also say it. But uh, the crease. Um, CRE system registrations, something that we already presented last uh, last uh, year. Um, we have the guidelines for CRE's working well. You can validate um, your CRE system against the, those guidelines. It's available in the validator tool, as I, I already show you. But uh, the registration process is not... Um, simple and we don't do it directly in the provide as we do for other kinds of data sources but we are working on that the workflow is quite well defined we are implementing it i hope to have um, i don't do promises about uh, specific months to deliver this but i for sure uh, we need to make the, to make this available in the in the first quarter of, of 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 this this year so i hope that we can have novelty soon about this uh, and facilitate the process of um, crease registration in our in open air infrastructure. Um, we will have some uh, some novelties also about the, the fair evaluation, the, the, this fair assessment that we did, that also to integrate in our guidelines. So this is something that you you can already check also a bit in the in the page of the guidelines that I have presented before uh, here okay I don't know if uh, Andreas or Leonidas you want to say something and um, uh, with this uh, with this um, okay uh, with this uh, possibility with this um, presentation I also uh, ex explain you that uh, we have uh, uh, Leonidas, Leonidas with us, if you want to present yourself, is, is a new uh, uh, person from open air, is a, uh, an expert, um, a scholarly communication expert that is working for open air, that will also support this work uh, on provide and in the guidelines. Uh, if you want to say something, please, please feel free. We want also to talk about this work that we are doing about the guidelines in, in, in upcoming community calls. So, um, uh, well, thank you very much, Pedro, for the introduction. Uh, well, as Pedro already told you, I am uh, from Open Air since the uh, first of January 2022. I was a scholar of the expert. I am a part of the provider in order to develop the fair evaluation. Okay, okay. The sound, the sound is not perfect, Leonidas. The sound is not perfect. Uh, so I will. Uh, so you, you can write something, or later you you join to say something because the, I I cannot understand you well. I'm sorry for that. So let's 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 move. Okay, uh -huh. and uh, and then uh, we can uh, uh, we can see. Okay. Um, okay. So it's then this first part is then. Um, Ah, I just want to also to want to highlight that uh, we have this YOSC uh, research product uh, catalog registration. What I want to say here is that, as you know, uh, and some of you are aware that um, Open Air Provide is we went uh, is the uh, gateway to for also for the YOSC um, for the YOSC. So YOSC uh, is building also this research product catalog. Uh, so um, uh, in the YOSC portal, you can register services and uh, and um, and resources. So uh, you can you can check. Um, we can provide you more information about this uh, later. But be aware that we will introduce some changes in the in in Open Air Provide dashboard to align with the work that we are doing 
in the EOSC future project for the process of um, EOSC resource registration, okay? So um, be aware of this, okay? EOSC, EOSC port, you will see a research product catalog in the EOSC portal. This research product catalog will uh, made visible um, resources that registered in the EOSC portal and we and the content of open air infrastructure will be visible in this research product catalog so being part of open air uh, uh, will make your content visible in the EOSC research product catalog okay this is just to make it clear um, and you will you will be informed about that. What you need to know is that we will, because of this integration between provide and the uh, YOSC portal, we will do some changes in the in in, in the in provide during the year. So just for you to to be aware of that, in the right time we will inform you. Okay. Okay. This is what I, I was explaining about the research product. Let's move to the organizations. So do you have any question about this um, first 20 minutes of presentations, recapping everything, what we did last year, and of course, informing some people that are here for the first time. Um, do you have any, any, any question? Feel free to ask in the chat. You can also put in the in the link in the in the minutes. Okay. If not, we can also reply at the end. Uh, sorry, Pe Pedro. Alan is here. Hi, Alan. Hey, hi. <laughs> Just one question. Uh, we registered our data repository uh, recently, and uh, I can see. Uh, uh, there on the explore page that uh, the content is uh, tagged as uh, other research products. I think it's not a data set, but the, it's uh, ORP. Data. Yeah, so research data, yeah. Uh, so uh, do we have to uh, do something on our side or is this something uh, regarding ind indexing or or what you you can you yeah i think check. it's a it's a, a good a good question so let me as andreas is here so we can also in fact register that and we can exchange um you can search for uh roger boskovic uh, roger boskovic is, is now yeah, is, as is, as pro provider yes 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 but, i know i know yeah but let me let me check croatia yeah. we have lots okay. of, of mm -hmm. Just because I, if you can write, I, I, I know I, I know how to start writing, but I don't I don't know the right the, word of, of your the name J, of your institution. J J J E R J E R. Okay. Uh, e like uh, 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 E sorry, sorry. E yeah. Yes. Okay and uh, uh, fully, uh, fully. Ah, fully, fully data. data. Okay, okay. I remember. Yeah. Remember this one. This one. Okay. Yeah. So Andreas can can register yeah, this. You, you can see this other research. Okay, maybe this is related with the um, uh, resource type for sure. Uh, but Andreas can can check mm -hmm. and. Uh, so. Okay, and then you can let me know because uh, it's uh, registered uh, through uh, Retrie Data as a data repository. You know, so I can see that some publication repositories that uh, that uh, mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. uh, data uh, data sets are properly uh, uh, tagged. So. Okay. Okay. That that's that's the only question here for now. Okay. I'm sure yeah. that. Uh, okay. Andrea, thanks. Andreas is already resisting this, and we can we can contact you. Uh, okay. Thanks. Okay. If we need to do something in our side in terms of transformation, or if we, you need to do something in your side to properly expose the the metadata information, but but. Uh, I don't have an answer now for you, and then for sure, Andreas need to investigate. <laughs> uh, but but thank you for 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 presenting this this issue is always important, and I think this is also interesting for others uh, that are registering uh, new data sources in, in Open Air. Perfect. 
Okay, Let, let's just provide you the information that we, we have in terms of organizations and I hope that this will be useful for you. Uh, as we did some, some changes uh, recently. Um, so, um, organizations in open air, you can explore a bit this, 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 this uh, entity uh, in explore, okay? explore.openair.eu, you can search for the different organizations you have and explore a bit the, the way that your organization in fact is presented there and if we have more than one entry for your organization, etc. Okay, uh, you can check that uh, uh, and then point us to some, uh, some uh, issue that you found, uh, report some, some bugs, some error that we need to, to improve. So. Uh, we are also highlighting this in order to receive your feedback. We know that there are things that are 100% uh, correct, and we know that there are things that need to be improved and curated because uh, curation is an ongoing process uh, because we are collecting information from different, uh, from different places, um, from different um, uh, directories, and because of that, uh, we receive um, um, new ways to present the organizations. It's not really um, uh, a smooth, uh, um, um, an easy process. Okay, there are several issues. There, there are disambiguation issues uh, to manage. This is why we have built and prepared this open orgs tool for us to correct that information. There is, a, there are also problems with the the, the um, uh, metadata quality of, 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 of the organization's information that we need uh, to, to, that we receive from different sources uh, in some places is not really, it's really poor, in other sources is more complete, so we need to, to deduplicate this, uh, this information. Okay, and, uh, and um, of course in this, uh, um, ingesting process, so we have different, uh, different ways to, to get the information from the organizations, um, um, organizations that come from um, funders, that come from uh, directories to register data sources, uh, that come from, um, from also from author affiliation. So we have several things here. It's not an easy way, an easy entity to manage the information, as you all know, and in open air, this these problems are visible, okay? Something that we were struggling since uh, the beginning. Um, so we were increasing, increasing the quality of some other entities and the, the organizations are not so um, uh, clear in the end with high quality. And because of that, we improved a lot of our processes and, and the result is the open orgs that we have now uh, as a tool um, available. Um, so, uh, but uh, so it's important to say that now we have we have, there are there is also uh, registries for organizations, uh, persistent identifiers for organizations, which made our life much easier. And uh, it and and for you to know, we have all these IDs and persistent IDs of organizations in our graph, which is really important for us to proper manage the organizations. So we receive it, we collect it from different sources um, uh, and we try to, to, to merge them, okay? Um, the registries like RAR and GRID and then the data sources, um, registrations, uh, directories, sorry, and the funders are those that we, where we are collecting, in fact, uh, organizations. Uh, and uh, what are we doing? We have, what we have improved uh, um, in the summer last year, and then we make it visible uh, and, and more visible in, in Explore, is this um, um, provision pipeline here. So um, we uh, so uh, configure the, 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 the provision pipeline in a way that we can um, introduce curation process, manual curation process. So we have some automatic things, gathering the information, but then we have uh, so um, processes uh, to manually curate the information in open orgs, okay? And then only after it's curated in open orgs and ingested in our graph, 
it's made available in our different services. Okay, the discovery service explore and then the the monitor. So this is, I think, this 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 graph is really uh, clear for you to understand what we are doing. So it's a, not a direct process now, as in the past we have now. Uh, more enriched process and we have in fact this open orgs so gina when you, you wish you can join to 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 improve my explanation so we have here uh, and uh, just to before gina just to to say that we have introduced this provision process uh we made available uh, this uh, in the production phase so in uh, this update that we did in July last year, last year, yes. So, and because and as, a, as a result of this new provision process, uh, we have uh, improved the way that we are exposing organizations, but we still have some issues. And of course, we still have a lot of curation to do in terms of um, organizations. So I know that already some of you are already checking the information, but, Open org, so it's a tool. It's an uh, it's not a, a tool to be used for all users, okay? Uh, but Gina will explain you who are the users of this tool, and uh, what is the what is the real benefit of using this tool? Um, yes. And yeah. Yes. Thank you, Pedro. Uh, yes, uh, we have, as you said, uh, basically two parts um, uh, in the process. The first part is the automated part, an algorithm that detects a similarity between uh, different entities of the same uh, uh, of organization and uh, those different entities have a certain um, kind of uh, similarity. This similarity is spotted by the algorithm and then the second step is the human intervention, the data curation. Uh, and uh, basically the data curation uh, is, organi is um, organized uh, in three steps. First of all, the uh, management of the applicates where the user can, uh, of course, um, accept or reject the similarity which has been detected by the algorithm. Uh, this similarity is detected looking at, for example, the names or the URLs or some other kind of metadata. And then the user has to, um, well, have a look uh, at the um, data, at the OpenORG database and establish if that uh, is a real identity or if it is, uh, for example, a false positive. Uh, because uh, the problem with the automated process is that, of course, we cannot have a 10% um, reliability of the process. Uh, we do need uh, to have a look to uh, that kind of work. And of course, the second um, kind of importance of human intervention is that uh, data curators can all, uh, uh, also enrich uh, metadata. So metadata are really important uh, to feed the automated part. And so this is um, a circle. In that sense, we designed this slide um, uh, with a circle because, uh, of course, the uh, metadata curation by the uh, data curators by human intervention uh, is really important to have all the process in line uh, also with the automated part. Um, I think that we can have a look of, uh, at uh, what is the result of the data curation, but of course, uh, curation of metadata uh, implies um, a different kind of information. Uh, so I think I will share uh, my screen. Yes, please, please do. Okay. So be aware that, uh, so Gina, uh, to just to explain before you, you demonstrate this, that what we have in open air to use the open orgs is that we have a, a national curator, someone, a uh, member of open air that uh, can manage and curate the information at the national level, at the national level. And also if you request any, any specific, um, uh, if you detect any specific error or bug, you can report it via the help desk. There is, in fact, uh, in the help desk uh, of OpenAir, there is a specific um, category for open orgs or for managed organizations, and you can uh, 
um, <clears throat> create a ticket there directly and, and Gina will manage that. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you, Pedro. This is important to underline. Of course, you can uh, just uh, write if you uh, meet some errors, if you encounter some errors. Uh, and what are we going to see together now is, first of all, what is the result on the Explore portal of the data curation and of all the system of OpenArcs? And then um, I, what is the um, data Data curation main tasks, so let's say main functionalities. Hmm? So this is my institution, the National Research Council uh, of Italy, and this is uh, what, uh, the the, the page of my institution the, on the Explore portal. And uh, the result of the curation is that we have uh, all the um, activities uh, put here together in this page. So we have all the funding streams that uh, in which CNR is involved and the publication, all content providers, of course, data sources and other output of uh, the research activity. So um, this is interesting to have a look at in the sense that this is a curation curated organization. And I want also to show you how uh, the organization appears uh, inside OpenORG. This is the interface of OpenORG database, and this is my institution, the page of my institution, National Research Council. First of all, we can see that it has an OpenORG ID. Um, so it means that the, this organization has been ingested inside the OpenORG system and it has been given an OpenORG uh, stable ID. But the important thing here to highlight is that uh, uh, we do not delete other uh, identifiers. So identifiers coming from other data sources, data providers, registries, and so on, are still being um, kept here uh, in this section, in the uh, identifiers section of the database. This is important because in this sense, we say that uh, OpenORG is creating bridges between um, uh, organ different um, data providers and initiatives in the uh, um, scholarly communication system. And uh, uh, also in, um, in the metadata enrichment, other IDs can be, uh, can be added here. The, you can select the type and then uh, add uh, other uh, identifiers for the same organization uh, if uh, the, the, it is not already shown. Um, well, uh, those are the metadata of the organization. Of course, here we have our metadata already uh, curated, but uh, another important part is this uh, relation part. Uh, in OpenORG, it is possible to curate uh, relationships between organizations. And this is also another important aspect uh, why we need human uh, contribution, uh, data curation, because um, of course, it, it, it's much more uh, easy, especially having a um, particular knowledge uh, of a certain country to uh, establish those relations. In this case, we have uh, CNR is a huge institution and we have this parent um, relation with a lot of other uh, institutes which are child of this uh, of this of the main institution the relationships that can be uh, established is of parent child uh, type at the moment this relation is ingested um, in the data but it is not shown uh, on the explore portal but uh, uh, it will be in the future I think in near future but I cannot say I, I cannot give a, a precise timeline uh, for this at the moment but it will be shown uh, also this type of information. Uh, well, the other important part is the duplicates part, as we have seen the curation of duplicates. So the user have to accept or reject the similarity spotted by the algorithm, as I have said. So in this case, uh, here we have the list of all the other entities of the same organization with the which the data curator here has accepted as being the same organization as the main one. Uh, we have chosen uh, to 
uh, to fill in the main name uh, uh, with the English version of the name. It's not a choice of this uh, of my institution, but uh, it, it usually in OpenOrg we uh, recommend to use this rule. So to give the uh, uh, main name in English and the national name to put the national the, the name in the national language in aliases in for the sake of um, uh, organization and. and and of also of simplicity, I should say. Uh, and in this case, all these entities uh, have been accepted right here, just um, checking in the uh, green check, uh, clicking on the green check that uh, those entities are the same uh, as the main one. And uh, this type of curation is available here under the curation menu. Uh, here we can see organizations with new duplicates. And uh, uh, here, for, for example, we can have a look of, at one organization. And we can say this is the um, uh, University of Bologna. And uh, it's the, the main name, the, the first part of the name is in Latin because it's intended as the proper name. Uh, but of course, University of Bologna um, means that uh, the main name is in English, so it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, then we have other um, here in this, um, in the bottom part of the, uh, the page we have other um, entities and in some cases we can say and in fact the curator have already highlighted the green check that they, they are the same organization for other um, in other cases uh, we can see that there are some false positives like it is for example for this uh, uh, in this case because we have a, a similar name or, or at least we have uh, the same um, uh, the, the, this, uh, the part of the name is the same but it is not uh, the University of Bologna this is um, uh, um, uh, um, it, it's not a research performing uh, organization and uh, so in this case uh, the user have to reject uh, the identity and uh, this can be done by clicking on the uh, red cross. So, uh, and uh, also in this case, it's a company because we have this uh, SRL that means uh, that it is a company. And so uh, I simply save changes and I have the result. And so um, the result of this operation is not immediately visible on the Explore portal. Uh, it takes uh, a while. Uh, it takes some time just to, in order for all the databases to be in line and to be shown on the, and uh, in, in indexed on, on the website. Uh, but the, uh, at the end, the result of this kind of operation that we perform on OpenOrg um, is visible uh, on the Explore portal. Uh, so um, uh, I have explained that the yes. uh, human curation is important in order to have um, metadata enrichment and also uh, because uh, we need a certain a kind of uh, uh, knowledge of the national situation. Um, maybe I can add uh, that we have two different kinds of users um, in OpenORG. Uh, the one is the simple user, which can basically enrich metadata and uh, uh, do the duplicate uh, curation. So resolve duplicates here in, th in this section here. And uh, then we have also national admins, uh, which have also the possibility to um, insert organization inside OpenORG. So giving OpenORG ID, a stable identifier to organization. And uh, well, um, uh, also new organization can be created. The simple user can create uh, also new organization, but then the new org has to be approved by the national admin. Um, 
basically, uh, in metadata curation, we uh, suggest to use the UTF-8 encoding and, uh, well, to write the main naming in English, I have said, and to put the, uh, nation, the name in the national language here in analysis. But it is important also to have the acronym uh, if it exists. And really, really important is to curate the URLs, as usually URLs as, uh, are really, really uh, useful to understand if um, the two entities uh, being proposed by the algorithm are, are uh, really relating to the same organization or not. Um, okay. Okay, I think that I have, uh, we have seen um, most of the main functionalities. Uh, there are some others, but I think they are um, related to more advanced uh, users. Yes, I think what, what is important here uh, for you um, is, is that, okay, you see, you know what is the, the process uh, to, um, to automatically ingest organization's information in the open air infrastructure. You know that we have a way to curate this information, which means that if you found, if you um, are finding any, any issue exploring the names of your organization in explore so service, so be aware that you can, uh, you can um, create a ticket. So uh, do you want to share something more or can I stop your... Gina, um, yes, I do not have uh, okay, okay, more okay, okay. relevant Let thing to, to add. Thank you, okay, Ben. Okay. So if you if you just to finish this this explanation, if you want to add something, just come here to support, uh, ask a question, and there is a specific um, category to to send in, send requests about organizations. Okay. So and then Gina will manage that uh, with the national support uh, for that. So. Be aware of it. Uh, we know that there are some really clean organizations, and there are others that need to, to some some curation, and this is um, important uh, for you. Yes, to, and uh, you in know. fact, in some tickets that have been uh, already opened, it um, the the, the uh, person writing or, uh, explained to us what the situation, what the real situation with uh, the org is, and this help is was really helpful for us just mm -hmm. to uh, detect what the problem is and to intervene in, in a precise way. Okay, so this was our idea to explain you that sometimes as we are receiving also several questions, this is becoming visible, more and more visible in the, in the open air infrastructure in the Explore service, so you can also ask questions. So uh, you can send requests, uh, this is what I want to say. If you have any question, uh, so feel free to, to, I know that you are, we are at the end already of the time, but if you have any question, so feel free to, to ask now. Now it's the time to, to ask these questions. Um, and they already shared all the, all the links. I also have a reply here to our colleague, um, uh, uh, Bianchi, uh, Ale Bianchi, I don't know the, the exact name uh, about Open Alex, but um, so feel free to ask a question. I just want to, to present. Uh, yes, Antenas, do you have any question? Hello. Hello. I present uh, Lithuania Consortium. Hello. Uh, I took part every year in your uh, meeting, but uh, my question is about uh, change desire compatibility level. I means it means about open area for systematic reports. Yes, mm -hmm. because uh, <clears throat> uh, I uh, I manage uh, now six uh, institutional repository. This repository based on national our uh, laba. Uh, repository that based on uh, Fedora, okay. and uh, Fedora every no, no participate in, in our consortium more than uh, forty institution, but, but now only eight institution uh, <coughs> registered in Open Door and in Open Area also registered. Eight, okay. Uh, eight, but I responsible. I am responsibility for five. Five. And uh, my, uh, I am head of uh, my team. Uh, I have uh, 
three programmers, and we managed all uh, library consortium. But uh, uh, my programmer uh, made uh, program and uh, changed uh, metadata format from uh, uh, DC to OpenAI. This was uh, to expose nine, to expose in, in, yeah, in, in yeah, 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 yeah. complying with our guidelines. Yes, yeah. nine, nine months ago, and I mm, have uh, uh, registered uh, two cases. Uh, one related to you, one related to Andreas, and we discuss it uh, by uh, via these cases. Uh, but now I see that uh, uh, two uh, repositories of this type. Uh, I can see that in 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 in, uh, in uh, uh, portal of Open Area uh, show that used uh, uh, metadata format number four, but other uh, only three. Oh, you can see Lithuania, yeah, yeah. and you, Lithuania, yeah. Three, mm -hmm. two, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. And you can see that only two, well, only two uh, uh, repositories uh, ha have a compatibility level Four. Four. Okay. Why not? Uh... Okay. Do, do we have? Do we have? So we can we can check that uh, for you uh -huh. for sure. So uh -huh. um, uh, can you can you put in the maybe in the notes here? Andre can can put the the right mm -hmm. link. Can you mm -hmm. put in the notes the, 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 the names of the repositories that are missing, and that uh -huh. do you think that they should be uh, version um, four of the guidelines, and, uh, mm -hmm. and they are not presented as that. Could mm -hmm. you point us to the right names of the? Because uh -huh. uh -huh. you said that uh, it was expected five, but we only have two. Yeah, if I yeah, understood yeah. well. Uh, now, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday we changed uh, uh, by using dashboard uh, update interface. We changed yes yesterday uh, one uh, okay. um, repository. Kalnos uh, University of Technology, and uh, my questions: When we change it yesterday, when will be actual this changing? When we will present in uh, Open Aira portal the this uh, uh, only only in the in, only in the in the next update? Okay, it's I not, only in the next it's, it's update. Not is not it, it means after one. Month or more? Yes, 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 after one month, yes. So because I uh, registered one repository in the end of this uh, on, on 2021, in January end, that uh, uh, until now, no. It's not visible, uh, it's not yeah. visible, it, it was yeah. not in the, yes. It, it is not. maybe only on, on February, yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll, yes, it, yes. It is for me clear. Uh, and one, I, in this moment, uh, today, uh, uh, validate uh, uh, fire uh, assessment and now it is working okay it is okay okay fine okay, perfect. but it doesn't work but 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 didn't work it is a uh, month ago this ah the validator tool yes yeah some, but, but, now, but now but now it is okay, it's working, working. Okay. It is, uh, if you have any if huh? you have any issue with any specific um uh, repository that should be labeled as uh, you, that you expect that should be labeled as open air version four please put it in the in the document okay for us to to have yeah, a yeah, clear yeah. idea what what it is so but many thanks for your um for your uh, um, comment and question uh, which is also interesting for okay, us to, to share can be to, to share what is the um, the process also of because this is a common question as antennas is also highlighting here because usually there are this doubt about when uh, is the right moment to see the information visible so there is always this um, slight um, <clears throat> delay in terms of the moment that we register in the moment is becoming visible and sometimes it's more, of course, than more than one month. It depends of, of, of the process. I don't know if Andreas, if you want to add something, but um, we will we will uh, keep this information, uh, okay? And we will provide you the needed support and explanation. Just just write it here in the in the in the minutes, okay? That this will be helpful for us. 
um, for sure we can see it also the updates that you made for the interface in our provide but if you put the the information here we can manage it directly with you to you and support you okay thank you thank you very much perfect, perfect. okay to finish be aware that uh, all the meetings for this first semester are already scheduled put, please put in your calendar the 2nd of march will be our upcoming meeting subscribe the newsletter if you don't receive it subscribe the newsletter we usually send it uh, two days before our meeting uh, with the novelties and the information two or three articles or four articles and um, ah, we have here also uh, the question of Ale Bianchi about Open Alex some of you may not be aware of Open Alex Open Alex is a, a new service uh, we, we can we can check that this is a, an an interesting and important question that you made. We can check about the Open Alex integration, but in fact, um, all all the resources, all the data sources of Open Alex, we have it in Open Air. Okay, Microsoft um, Academic Graph, that is the 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 main source that, in fact, was because of the sustainability of that Open Alex appear. So um, we have it. Uh, we have. Um, so ROR, uh, ORCID, uh, so all the others, the main data sources of OpenAlex. But we, we can check. We can, in fact, check uh, about um, gaps. If we have, uh, if we have gaps, uh, if we compare Open, open Air Graph and OpenAlex uh, content, I suppose my first impression that we may not have gaps uh, but uh, but we can check <laughs> uh, i don't know if my other, other colleagues from open air andreas or want to add something about that as this is something really new open alex was presented on i think deliver on the 3rd of january in in beta but but this is my feeling my what i can say now and i i in fact i i, I didn't discuss it recently with uh, our our um, uh, CTO Paulo Mangi about this, but may, we may we may want to discuss and check some gaps. Okay, thank you for that 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 question. Okay, from my side is all. So um, please access the um, the website of the community calls to access the content that we have shared here. I ask Antanas, please don't forget to add the name the name of the repositories to the notes in order. Yeah, for I will to send you directly, okay. Andreas, by mail. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect, mm -hmm. perfect. Okay, many thanks for your presence here. Uh, I hope that it was useful. Um, and uh, please feel free to contact us. <coughs> Be aware that uh, you know. Gina, now, if you have any issue about the organizations, be aware that you can contact her. Um, we will try to do our best to curate and to fix any any error in the way that we present the organization, your, the name of your organization. And feel free to contact us. See you in the upcoming call on the 2nd of March. Gina, many thanks for your contribution, okay? You're welcome. You're okay. welcome, of course. Bye-bye, all.